AZK. Celebrating over 20 years of playing the best mix of gospel music for the CSRA. CSRA. Time 16. AZK. It's time now for Can We Talk. Can We Talk? Can We Talk by Christopher James. Send the road to the A. Call 706. 726 Control. Good evening. Welcome to County Talk. I'm your host, Ben Hassan. We'd like to encourage everyone to call family and friends and encourage them to turn your dial to WKZK 1600 AM and hear the good news. And the good news is we have with us once again Mr. Gray Abrams here to share some insights about some very exciting things, the dynamic things I would say, that are happening in the community. So once again, Mr. Abrams, welcome to Can We Tell? Thank you, Ben. Glad to be here. I'm always glad to have you. Uh, today, audience, we're going to talk about something that I've uh, been skirting around for quite some time. Uh, and it's kind of like for personal reasons because I didn't want to get the, the issues confused. And that issue is that uh, the school board issue, and that's what, uh, with A.K. Hassan, Dr. Law, that's what it has become. But in essence, that is not really that, but it looks like that it was in the public's mind. And the reason being, some of you who don't know, A.K. Hassan is my brother, so I thought to keep this program neutral in the sense that I don't people think this is an A.K. Hassan program, I just have to stay away from that. But at the same time, I want to try to keep the community abreast of what's going on in the community, so at this point in time, I have no other choice than to be fair with the community about what is actually happening, uh, what is my take on it, I have Mr. Abel share what is his take on it. And um, as usual, let you make a decision about what's important to you in the scheme of things. But I know for sure you share some, some light or some insight on it where you can look at it definitely from a different perspective. So with your permission, I'm going to proceed and go ahead on and get involved in this thing here, uh, talking about the school board issue. And Mr. Abrams, I know that me and you originally met at your home um, and we were just getting to know when we were feeling one about. And in the midst of you uh, sharing some things with me, you said to me, said, uh, I know you mentioned some things about your brother. I didn't ask you anything and you said, okay. And um, then you said, I think your brother's doing, you know, what, is, what he's doing is right. I didn't elaborate, I just listened. as I was first initial comments that you made to me about it. I think at another time, we might have had a little decent conversation where I actually made some comments. But for the most part, we not discussed it thoroughly at any point in time. So I think it only becomes, uh, I think it's now it's time that we actually have that discussion here on Can We Talk. And uh, so my point is, in terms of, Dr. Locke's contract, where well, the thing initially started, there had been a perpetual contract, and they can bring that out to the community. What is your position on that? Well, I look at it this way, uh, Ben. AK is a board member elected by the people of his district. Uh, they elected AK to look out for their interests, and one of the interests of uh, taxpayers is to try to save money and try to get the best boom for, for the buck that they spend. Uh, with this perpetual contract that Dr. Locke seems to have, it seems to be unfair to the taxpayers uh, and it has nothing to do with uh, personal relationship with uh, AK and Dr. Locke. AK is doing his job by pointing out a flaw in a contract where the taxpayers end up uh, uh, keeping on an individual just because he has passed an evaluation for one year, the contract is renewed for three more years. So that is an, an ever, a never ending contract. And it was right on AK's part to, to bring this issue up and to inform the community as to what uh, the board has been operating under uh, with the contract with Dr. Locke. I didn't see anything wrong with uh, questioning uh, the contract that Dr. Locke has. I think the issue is, is that he is a black man that is questioning how much money another black man is, is, is earning. That's where it has been put 
uh, by other individuals in the community, but it has nothing to do with how much money Dr. Locke is earning, but rather is the contract fair to the taxpayers. And I personally am a taxpayer in Richmond County, and I don't think it is fair. Okay. Okay. With that, I mean, is that a valid argument? Because um, also, when you talk about the contract, because the contract definitely is a never-ending contract. Because every year that he passes the evaluation, the contract will automatically renew itself for three more years, year in and year out. So that means he was never entering to the second year of this contract. The contract was constantly renewing itself. Yes. Possibly for the first time, he's going to his second year if he has officially flunked the evaluation, and that has never been publicly known and been publicly speculated. Right. So for the first time, he has a contract that he's even to the second year of the contract. And what people don't want, and I want to say this here, well, now what, is, what does this mean, what we're saying right now? What we're saying about this contract here that AK was bringing to the, to the public's attention is that when, whenever Dr. Law would have decided to retire, the taxpayers would have had to buy him out for two years. No matter what point in time, he would always have two years that he'd have to be bought out to walk away even when he retired. Yes. And they can say that was, that was not in the taxpayer's best interest. A contract should be of such that I can work it out and at the end of my contract, I can renew my contract, but he would have never had to do that. Absolutely. He could have walked away with two full years of pay at the time that he actually retires and that could have gotten into way over half a million dollars between a half a million and a million dollars if we're talking about three or four years down the road. Yes, absolutely. What we've, what we've allowed to happen, we've allowed a group of people in this community to capture uh, this contract in a light that puts uh, the owners, not on Dr. Locke, but on AK, uh, for saying that this is, uh, it, it is not a good contract for, for the taxpayer. So now AK is the one that has to explain why it's not a good contract. People aren't listening to that because Dr. Locke is a black man. And uh, it, they, have, they have pictured this thing as AK is attacking another black man. That's how they have captured this whole argument. And there are a lot of people who are following this argument. And it is uh, a vicious lie. It is not the truth. And when people bring the truth to, to us, and I said black people, many times we don't want to hear the truth. We would rather believe a lie. And for those people who are believing this lie, it is a shame on them because uh, you have a man that's serving you who's intelligent, a man who's earnest, a man who wants to do the right thing, but the people are seemingly rejecting it and following a lie that's coming from the likes of Brian B. Uh, who preaches this garbage every morning on his radio show? So, so with that, but you know, let's, let's let me just go back into the history of of AK before we you know go further into this here. AK have always seemed to be a lightning rod for the warlords in our community. Now, we talk about the warlords here. For those who was on the program, uh, listen to the program Monday night. We had Frederick Benjamin, who has his own paper now called the City Tribune. But he also, for probably 20 some odd years, was the editor of some of the Walker's from some of the Walker's paper, the Augusta Focus. Right. And so he gave us a description of the warlords. And with the description of the warlords he was making reference to, he was talking more about the people who struggle for power in the black community against one another to do, guess what? To lead us. Yes. And many times these people were not even elected officials. Absolutely. So now my point is this. These individuals over the history of AK's political career, they have never supported AK. They have never supported AK. Now, and what, 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 what brings... Well, let me, let me say thing about Augusta. Augusta has an elitist black people. And if you're not of that ilk, I don't care what you do, what you bring to the table, how much intelligence you bring to an argument, you will not satisfy that group of black people in this community. Ah, but, they're in, but they're in the minority though. They, they are in the minority, but they have control of, 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 of the airways, they have control of the news uh, media, and uh, they control the politics in this community. They are the minority, but they have the power. Uh, they control the weak, the meek, those people who don't know. They, 
uh, 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 use them when it comes time for election. It don't even associate with the people that they have at rallies and people that they need, the, what I call the ground troops. Uh, they ha there's no association with them until they need them to stand on the front line and hold up signs and, and rally. We have some vicious black people in this community who hold back the progress because they don't want people like your brother AK or people like myself in any leadership position because they know that we're going to do what is right. We're going to do what is right for the community. We're going to speak up. We have no ulterior motives. We're not looking to uh, for prestige. We're not looking to get rich. We're not looking to enrich our friends. We just want to do the right thing. When I ran for mayor in this town, in 1972, after having been out there on the front line and working hard for my community and trying to bring about some changes in this community, you know how many votes I got? I got 400 and some votes mm. in this community after having spent uh, a years trying to black people here. The reason I got 400 votes because Great Abram was not a part of this elitist group that resides in this community. Hankerson, Reverend Bobby Hankerson, was feeded simply because Bobby was not a part of that elite group in this community. Bobby was a fellow who came up the hard way, came up in the streets, he, he, he knew the streets, but he, 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 he turned his energy in doing constructive things in the community. But he was never accepted, even though he won the commission seat, but he was never accepted. One reason he wasn't accepted because he ran against Mr. Brigham. Uh, Mr. Brigham was sick, and Bobby saw that Mr. Brigham perhaps was not going to be able to serve out a term. So Bobby saw it was an opportunity, Reverend Hankerson saw it was an opportunity to get in there and run for office. He ran and he won. Black people in this community, the elite of this community, they never forgave Bobby for running against Mr. Brigham, who was ill in this community. So let me ask you this. When you, the average African American in this community, and I'm going to refer back once again to Frederick Benjamin's comment Monday night. I asked him about these warlords, first because he used the term warlords, and so we said so we're going to say these are the people that's trying to control the black community. Right. And I asked him the question, do they have the black community's interest at heart? I asked him, don't give me a political answer. Mm -hmm. I said, whatever 51% of the way that you feel, yes or no, that's what you answer. His response to, to, to us, who heard him on the night, was, only if our interest was in line with their interest, Absolutely. then we're on the same page. In other words, they don't care what we think. Absolutely. They don't care what we want. They don't care what our needs are. The only needs that they are, they are concerned about is what is important to us. Now, how do they keep us loyal to them? By coming to us with a so-called black agenda. Can we, do we agree on that? Absolutely. A black agenda and talking about the white man when it's convenient to talk about the white man. They, they use that to draw us to them. But when, when they are in their private quarters, they are embracing the white man because that's where they want to be. They want to be in the white man's company. They want to be a part of what the white man has. But they need the, the, the black man, the small black man, the, the, the individual who's out there trying to make a living, trying to do the honest thing. They need him. They need him at the polls, and they, they, they go so far as chauffeuring to the poll <laughs> to make sure that he votes the way they want. But after he votes, they can care less about him. They care no more about him than, than white people who we say use us at the poll during election time. Slave masters are slave masters. Slave masters slave masters. We have some black slave masters out there. Yeah, and, and sometimes they're worse than the white ones <laughs> because they know us better. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. You're listening to Can We Talk. I'm your host, Boone Hassan. My guest once again today is Mr. Grady Aiden. We'll be right back. We're going to take a commercial break. Do you practice fire safety in your home? Never leave your stove unattended while you're cooking. Keep heating appliances three feet away from anything that can burn. Store flammable liquids outdoors away from heat sources. Keep matches and lighters away from children. And if you smoke, make sure that you completely extinguish your cigarette and smoking materials after use. This message is brought to you by Christopher James, training chief of the Augusta Fire Department. The new 
newest name in financial services is over 110 years old. American Express Financial Advisors has become Memorial Financial. Though their name has changed, their central old heritage is well intact. So whether you're planning for retirement, saving to put your kids through college, or thinking about starting a business, let Ameriprise Financial Advisor Charles F. Smith put his knowledge to work for you. Talk to an Ameriprise Financial Advisor today. Call Charles F. Smith at 706-724-6257. Offices are located at 801 Broad Street, Suite 601, Augusta, Georgia. Ameriprise Financial Services, member NASD. Drugs out of control? Who you gonna call? Barry's Pest Control. Free inspection, licensed, bonded, and insured. Located at 1101 Laney Walker Boulevard in Augusta. Call 706-631-5556 for an appointment. That's Barry's Pest Control, the bug buster. Augusta Blueprint, Retinographic Services and Supplies, located at 512 Well Street in Augusta. Visit us on the web for full details of services provided at www.augustablue.com or call us at 706-722-6844, extension 202, James Kendrick, owner. Professional carpentry, huge savings, limited time only, whole house special, three bedrooms, living room, and then only $69.99. Covered steam cleaning service, residential and commercial, licensed and bonded. Located at 2460 Mrs. Spring Road, Suite 4A in Augusta. Call us for details or appointment at 796-7645. Serving the lower and touching heart in the CSRA with the best gospel for over 20 years and counting and counting. We must be doing something right. WKZK Sunshine 16. Welcome back. You're listening to Can We Talk. I'm your host, Ben Hassan. My guest today is Mr. Grady Abrams. Mr. Abrams, before we went away, we were talking about the so-called hidden black leadership of the warlords, the one who was, wants to control the heart and mind of the black community without the black community's consent. Why do they fear individuals like AK? Where are they, where are they running for? Why do they want him to be in office? Because, that, because in the work with AK on the campaign trail, mm -hmm. they've done everything humanly possible so that he wouldn't win. And, and historically, in the past, even he was in office, as a young man, they redrew districts on him and everything to keep him out of office. What are they trying to protect? Uh, their selfish interests. Uh, you see, AK digs in and he gives people information that that the warlords uh, don't want people to have. You know, power is information. And if you don't have information, you can't act. AK went in there when he was elected, and I heard people say, time AK got in there, he started uh, raising sand, and he started opening up cans of worms and these kinds of things. Uh, even the people that AK was trying to help by opening up those cans of worms, taxpayers, who will have to end up paying for all of these mistakes and miscues that the Board of Education and the school system has made. Uh, 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 they they can't control the masses of the people unless they control the information that people get. So when you get an honest person in there who's who's there to serve the people and not themselves and not their special interest groups, then that individual is going to have trouble. So, so excuse me. So you know, since you mentioned information, because as you said, in my mind came to nobody has said has proven AK wrong with what he has said, so all the attacks have been personal attacks. Personal attacks. Because what he is saying, they can't attack that because it's the truth. The truth, you can't. You so you've got to paint him as a, as a black wannabe, yes. a one who's jealous of law, yes. but nobody has said the information he's given to the public is wrong yet. Absolutely. Nobody has just proved to him yet. And they will not be able to do that. And that's the tactic that people who have no uh, offense other than to, to attack personally individuals who, who, who try to uh, uh, make changes. That, that has been going on for years and years. That's how politics works. Uh, if you can't uh, uh, attack a person on issues, then you go for personal attacks. Because, I, I mean, in, in being on the campaign trail with AK, when AK decided to get into the race, and as we was working the, 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 the turfs and talking to people and stuff, people were very nightmarish in terms of how they would, their kids were being treated, how they were not getting any responses uh, from, the, from, the, from the school system, in terms of their kids, 
uh, no, no return phone calls or anything. I mean, it was really horrible. It was yes. really horrible yes. to see it. And sometimes, I don't have kids in the system, sometimes we'd be removed from that, not knowing that's going, going on. But I literally had parents out there that say who had not registered. Yes. And was saying, if you all could change this system, get anything done, then we, that you, can, you, can, you can register me. You yes. can register me. They were just living in fear and horror about their kids in, those, in, the, in that kind of situation. And those people are still out there. They are out there, but they are quiet. They are silent. And that's what worries me. Uh, the people who know that AK is fighting a good battle, that AK is doing what is right, they, they have these private conversations. Uh, among themselves. A silent majority. A silent majority, but they don't come out and speak publicly. Is that a good thing? No, it isn't. What they have allowed to happen, they've allowed people like Ryan B. to come in this community and be the only voice that is speaking out in this community and, and, and the information that he's given them is, is, is misinformation, disinformation, bad information. Yeah, because I heard just today, once again, he was telling his audience that AK stay in Carolina. Yes. I, I, he was saying that something that it, has been proven, he stayed right in Augusta. This man, this man, Ben, is the biggest con artist, and I'll say it again. Great Abrams is saying this, and one day people will, will, will realize it. This is the biggest con artist that has ever come through this town, bar none. The, the con artists that go on Broad Street and convince people to go to the bank yes, and draw out $10,000 and put it in a paper bag, this man make them look like the little, uh, little clowns. This man is a professional con artist. That's why he's been able to get so many people to follow him and to call in to his show and tell him what a good job he's doing because he's a con artist. He, he has no regard for the people that he says he's trying to help. And he has no regard for God. This man would go so far as to use God in his con game. Well, let me say this here. I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And the reason I say that, so people say, well, why would you say that? Well, I would say that for number one, because he's not dealing in truth. He's not. He won't give you the facts. He always gives you one side of the story. And it's not one, it's his side of the story. It's his side of the story. Side. And he won't allow anybody else to call in there, black or white, who has a different viewpoint. He will not allow them to talk 30 seconds on his show. And the show was supposed to be about information, inspiration, Inspiration and, and therapy. How can you get information? How can you make up your mind? How can you make decisions when you're hearing just one side? He will not allow for discourse. He will not allow for uh, opposition. Y you don't educate people that way. If you're interested in educating people, you allow anybody to enter into the discourse and then allow people to make up their minds after they have heard from both sides of an argument. This man does not allow but one side of the argument and there's a lot of hearsay. He's a man that says he doesn't read the paper. He doesn't listen to the radio. Where does he get his information from? People calling him in, telling him something. He's a man that promises people things every day on the air. Yeah, I, I, I'll call you, I'll call you, I'll call you as soon as I get off there. I know he doesn't attend to these people because they call back two, three weeks later. Uh, you, you miss so and so. I was intending to get in touch with you. I got 20 calls on my phone and I can make five a day and people hold me for an hour on a call and I just don't have, he has excuses for everything that he doesn't do right. This man needs to tell the public if he wants to be the man in this town, if he wants to be the leader, he needs to tell the people the truth. And the first truth he needs to tell them is what is he about? What is his reputation? Is it true that he's been to prison? If he's been to pr prison, and he's, is it true that his name is what he says it is? If it's not, then we're dealing with a dishonest person. And a dishonest person in, in, in this regard is dishonest in all regards. Not only that, um, you know, we're saying whether that's him that we've seen a profile of or not. Yes. It's most surely no doubt that he just came on the scene here to Augusta, hasn't been here a year yet. Yes. And here he is on a daily basis making commentary, uh, uh, making what, what seems to be supposed to be facts about people he don't even know. He, he, he does not even know these people. And, and what amazes me is some of the people who have, 
who have who have butted up to him. I mean, I heard a man this morning. I had high respect for this man, uh, 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 Reverend Davis, Hardy Davis. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of respect for him. I listened to him on TV, and I and yet he's buttering up to Ryan B. He, here they're calling in, telling Ryan B. You've done a wonderful job, and they associate themselves with the devil. This man is a con artist, and he will take a lot of people down with him if they don't get off this bandwagon with Ryan B. I've lived in this community for 67 years, and I tell you, Ben, I have never seen such a con artist as Ryan B. come through this community and fool people in short a time as he has since he's been here. Well, not only that, I mean, he, he's been so effective that by him having uh, that program is almost like he's using it as a bully pulpit. Yes. And so other warlords are feeding him information too for their forming an alliance for their own personal gain. Now out of all the the and all of them different have have different people they want to endorse. Yes. But every one of them have one common enemy, and that's A.K. Hassan. A.K. Hassan. There's no doubt about that. AK, AK Hassan has all of them enemies. He, he's always been even and I and, and I hope I don't think about it. When Mr. McIntyre was living and and, and formal Senator Walker and Powell, they was always going to see AK out of the way because he was too forthcoming and they couldn't control him. AK came from the wrong side of the track for them. As I tell you, I came from the wrong side of the track. They never embraced me. When I was on city council, there was B.L. Dent, there was Ted Bowman, and there was Reverend Hamilton. I was an outsider. They never embraced me because I didn't think the way they thought. I, I had my own agenda, and that was trying to help people. They tried to pull me in, ring me in several times about, man, this is not the way you play this game. Listen, I thought I was being elected to represent the people. But when I went out there on that stump and, and started standing up and fighting for the people, these people disassociated themselves with me if they ever were associated with me. I tell you, this is a heck of a town with black people in their own elitist uh, uh, clauses uh, environment. They were not allowed the likes of an A.K. Hassan or Grady Abrams to, to enter into their political uh, arena. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and, 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 and I'm asking your opinion on this because I have, a, I have an opinion about it, but I want to hear what, yours is, what your, your opinion is in regards to this. Why is it that they won't be forthcoming and be honest with us? I know they want to control us. I mean, I, 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 that's a given. Mm -hmm. Is it because in their heart of hearts they really don't believe that we can compete with anybody else? Do you think, is there a possibility? And so there's no use there. So really we are a waste of time? And no, no, they they have their ulterior motives, and they're no different from, from I guess white politicians who want to control white people or anybody else they can control. When people are trying to control people, they use whatever means necessary, whatever they need to do to control you. That's what they do. So if the intent in the beginning is not right, everything else they do is going to be wrong. So. I have absolutely no respect for people who say they are, are, are running for office or they are in office to help people when I know that they are only there to help themselves. Okay, great. We're going to uh, get ready to take, we're going to take a commercial break here and we're going to come back because you just said something I think is very, very important. That word was intent. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the, mention the power of intentions, then we're going to, you know, talk about the psyche because I'm a firm believer because, you know, all matters. All matters are judged by intentions, and right. all of us will get that which we intended. Absolutely. So, like, so you're saying the intentions are no good. No good. So we'll get back in just a minute. You're listening to Can We Talk. I'm your host, Bill Hassan. Also, we come able to give the number so you can call in if you have a question or you have a comment. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break, please. In need of professional plumbing with quick response and affordable flat rates, call Universal Plumbing Repair Specialists. We're fully licensed and bonded. We accept residential, commercial, and industrial contracts. Locally owned and operated at 1650 Olive Road in Augusta. Call 706-738-4424. That's 738-4424 for an appointment. That's Universal Plumbing. 24 hours emergency service available. 
For reliable prescription service, this is a medical villa pharmacy located at 1529 Walker Boulevard off 15th Street next to the OY Saver and in close proximity to NCG Hospital. We accept federal Medicaid, insurance plan, charge cards, and we also offer a fast free delivery service. Contact us today, 706-722-7355. That's Medical Villa Pharmacy, the only black-owned and operating pharmacy in the CSRA. Pharmacist and owner, Marshall Curtis. Visit us today. Hey, CSRA, did you know about the one-stop construction office where you can get architectural blueprints, residential and commercial construction all under one roof? Larry L. McCord is an architectural designer and general contractor with 20 years experience in design build construction. Licensed and bonded in Georgia and South Carolina, Larry L. McCord and his professional staff have expertise in guiding you to a successful building project. So please, don't worry about who's going to design and build your next project. Call 706-733-2931. That's 706-733-2931 for your free consultation. Remember, CSRA, Larry L. McCord Design Build is your local one-stop construction office. So call 706-733-2931. That's 706-733-2931. Three two nine three one. Your one-stop construction office for residential and commercial construction, all under one roof. Larry L. McCord Design Build. 706-733-2931. I'm Donald Walton of Kinsey and Walton Funeral Home in Augusta. At Kinsey and Walton Funeral Home, we realize that no one likes to discuss funeral arrangements. But when the time comes for your family to discuss arrangements, we will be pleased to answer any questions and offer any advice that may be helpful to you. You may stop by our office at 3618 Peach Road, or if you prefer, call for an appointment at area code 706-790-8858. Whether you're considering pre-planning or if you have an immediate need, Kinsey and Walton will be honored to be your funeral home of choice. At Kinsey and Walton, we will give you the best value possible along with the most professional and caring service. That's our promise always. Kinsey and Walton Funeral Home, 3618 Peach Richard Road, area code 706-790-8858. We're large enough to take care of your needs and small enough to care. Praising His Name. Praising His Name. With uplifting Christian music on Sunshine 16. WKZK. Now you can listen to. Welcome back. You're listening to Can We Talk? I'm your host, Ben Hassan. The guest today is Mr. Grady Abrams. Um, also, we're going to give the number out so you can call if you want to make some comments or you have some, some questions that you'd like to ask. The number is 706-733-0044, 706-733-0048. Uh, I'm sorry, 706-733-0044, 706-733-0048. Also, at this time, I'd like to announce the friends and supporters of Can We Talk. VFA Income Tax Service, 706-737-0034. First Bank on Walton Way. Butler Alterations and Tuxedos Runner, 706-738-0074. Holland's Rolling Store, 706-830-2161. Easy Ride of Augusta, 33 times a week, we travel to Atlanta. 706-860-4900. Choice Automotives, 706-210-1225. Fairway Ford, David Moyer, 706-495-1827. Harry James III, Attorney at Law, 706-724-0801. Kendrick's Clearing and Hauling, 706-722-4409. And last but not least, Hassan E. Fado, MD, PC, specialized in high-risk pregnancy, 706-724-2148. Those are the friends and supporters of Can We Talk. Mr. Abel, before we went away, you mentioned about their intentions. If your intentions start out wrong, they're going to, everything's going to end up wrong. Right. So, when you think about intention, what comes to mind for you? When you think about a person's intentions. Well, it, you can have good intentions and bad intentions. I, I think uh, if a person is thinking about personal uh, 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 gratification, if he's thinking about enriching himself and, and not being a servant to the community as an elected official, then his intentions is to do things for himself and for his personal friends. And this could readily be seen uh, uh, in their term of office. Uh, the public is only wanted when election time comes. 
uh, that's the only time they want to engage public debate, uh, cut public discourse, and then they want to control that at that time also. So uh, we don't get the truth from many politicians because their intent is wrong from the beginning. And, and a good crook is not going to tell you, I want to steal from you. <laughs> a crook, good crook is not going to tell you, I'm going to burglarize your house. He wants you to believe that he's the best person in the world, that he doesn't steal, he doesn't burglarize, and he gets you off, 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 off kettle. You, 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 you're thinking that this is an honest person because he's talking honest talk to you, but his intent is to do you wrong. And many of our politicians out there, black and white, uh, are not there with good intentions from the beginning. So in preaching to us about white folks misusing us, and black folks got to do this, and black folks got to do this here, in a real way, this has not allow, allowed us to embrace this country and get the full benefit of the opportunity, because there's no doubt about it, even though what we've been through in this country, and even where we are right now, is without a shadow of a doubt that this is still the greatest country on the face of the earth. Yeah. But, those, but those warlords embed into our mind and to our spirit that this country is constantly and habitually abusing us. And we pay the ultimate, ultimate price because me and your freedom is at stake because these people want to, our own people is taking our freedom away from and putting us in shackles. They, they want to hold us back. That's the only way they can exist is to show that we are still held in slavery. There are no opportunities for us and we are victimized and uh, we need uh, the help uh, of, of people before we can make it. We can't make it on our own. They keep us in that bag. And if you can keep people thinking that they're victims. Vict victim mentality. Yeah, that victim mentality. You can control them. All you have to do is point to an enemy. Now, I, I like yourself, and most black people have had experiences, and we're not denying this, with white people that are negative. Many of us have had either directly or indirectly we have had experiences uh, that that would allow us to to say that the white man is is not for the black man, but we can't take those individual experiences and judge the whole white race. We can't do that. If we do that, then it's no different than the white man looking at us uh, individually and judging the whole black race. If a white man sees one black man walking down Broad Street with his pants hanging down, he, he can't say that all black people are that way. Likewise, we can't condemn all white people because we have had some individual experiences with them. I've had some with, on my job, and I could easily join the chorus with the Ryan B's and call in and say, Ryan B, you're right. You're absolutely right. White people this, white people that. But I choose not to do that. I choose to deal with white people on an individual basis. If they're all right with me, I'm all right with them, okay? I'm not going to condemn the whole white race because I've had some bad experiences with one or two. And, and we need to get out of that. And, and what our psyche is this, we, we hate we, we hate white people for various reasons. Among them, things that have happened, as I said, to us individually. We hate them. And so all it takes is for a person like a lion bee to come along and prey on that hate, that latent hate that all of us, most black people have for white people. Let's be honest now. Mm -hmm. All of us have some issues with white people. Even those that sit next to white people every day on their jobs and grin on their faces. When they get out of their faces and by themselves, they are talking about those white people just like the black man who just got beat across the head by a policeman. Okay. So, so we all have issues. But how far do we carry those issues? Do we carry those issues in, 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 in our every, everyday walk of life? Or do we set them aside and say, here's an isolated incident that happened to me, but I'm not going to let this incident uh, uh, um, muddle my judgment about everybody that's in the white race. If we do that, we are putting ourselves in slavery, more so than if the white man did it himself. Let me ask you this. As, 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 as people listen to that type of demagoguery mm -hmm. from, from Ryan B. or anybody else, right. um, what has happened to our spirit, or what has happened to our spirit, that we don't even know the truth no more when we hear it? Or we're not looking for the truth? Or uh, we, 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 we just tell us anything? We know the truth, but, but through Ryan B., 
we can show our hate toward whom we call our enemy. Through Ryan B. Ryan B. is our voice in the community to say to the white man what we want to say, but we're afraid to say it because of our economic status, our jobs. So we can't say it. We use a Ryan B. And that's why we call in and, and congratulate him and encourage him to keep up the good work. What is the good work? The good work is, Ryan B., you keep talking about white people and you're satisfying me. That's all you have to do. I don't, I don't need to know anything about you. You could be the biggest crook in the world. Just as long as you're talking about white people, you're okay with me. And that's the, that's the position. And that's sad that we have come to that point where we can't think for ourselves. We allow people to use demagoguery to, to, to have us to hate people for no reason at all. So let me ask you this. What, what ever happened to the work ethic that was embedded in us back in the day in terms of encouraging us and reminding us and listen being uh, you got to be twice as good mm -hmm. as the white was or anybody else to get ahead in life. And, but now we just play things that were white folks doing. Yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden white folks have become our moral compass. They are our moral compass and that's how we justify what our black politicians do. Uh, this man Jefferson there in Louisiana. Uh, even in Ed McIntyre when he went to jail. We justified his uh, what happened to him by, by saying that well white people steal. They've been stealing uh, ever since uh, the city was here. And then Ed McIntyre took $10,000 and they want to jump all over his back. The fact is, if Ed was found guilty in a code of law, Ed was found to be a crook. Now, it's hard to say in the black community. Now, you get ostracized, you get, you get put down to say that in the black, but somebody got to say it. We got to start calling it the way it is. But that's because if we don't, we will, we will become victims of our own uh, uh, secrecy and, and trying to hide our faults and our mistakes. But you know, the re I mean, this, is, this is my real concern with it, and I think you said it, but I'm going to say it just a tad clear, and that's very difficult to do, say something clearer than you. Mm -hmm. um, I think, in my mind, as I look back over everything that African Americans or blacks have accomplished in this country, from just coming through slavery, just coming through all the civil rights era, just coming through to the economic clout that we do have, even though it's scattered, it's, it's, it's individualized, it's not collectively, I think it's because we, we wanted to do what was right. Mm -hmm. We knew that God had his hand, we had the favor of God, along with other people. We're not saying they exclusive right, right from God. Right. No mean. Right. But I'm saying, but God knew our heart was right. Mm -hmm. But now as we begin to buy into anybody's program and begin to justify what we do because somebody else has done it, then I'm afraid that we're going to lose the faith of God. Yeah, that, we, we, that, we, that we will start retrogressing as a community and we will not be, the, because we've only made it thus far by the faith of God. Yes, absolutely. And once we start trying to make a lie the truth, yes. then we're in direct violation of what God would have it to be. Yes. All Dr. King done in his day for the white folks who hated him and not, all he did is call him my sick white brother. Uh-huh. Right. He didn't get off on those binges and try to destroy them as their humanity because he realized they were still human, but they got some issues. That's right. Issues. And so I'm concerned that we're going to mess right around here and let all this demagoguery become a part of us and we're going to lose the kind of things that was always catapulting us into the, into the mainstream and position ourselves to do what God would have us do. Yes, and in the process we lose our integrity. Uh, uh, People have no, no respect for us when we lose that. Uh, when we can support crooks among us, when we do not condemn them if the same way we would condemn a white crook, uh, if, if we can't condemn a black crook among us, then we're hypocrites. And I don't care who it is, it, if it happens to be me, if it happens to be my brother, if he's found to be a crook, he's a crook, period. But we can't call the, the crooks in our community crooks. We, we protect them. We give them a, a, a sanctuary. 
uh, among us, so long as they're against white people now. If they're against white people, I don't care what they do. They can steal, they can kill, they can do whatever they want to do, and we will protect them. That's wrong. We've got to stand for truth. And, and, and it, it concerns me that so many preachers are involved in this demagoguery. So many preachers who are supposed to be out there preaching the word of God and supposed to be preaching love and love their brother. Not their, just their black brother, but their white brother too. And they are out there preaching just the opposite. I have no respect for them. They, they get no respect from any person who stands for the truth because they are not standing for the truth. Well, once again, I'd like to make another mention of Dr. King, something that he said um, at the time he was making mention in his last address. And he was reminding his audience or his, or his, or his, or his supporters, I would say, right. his supporters of his last address the night before he got killed. And he was reminding them of the time that he actually got, got stabbed. Right. Right? The, the minute women stabbed yes. him, and he was saying that he was told if he would have sneezed, mm -hmm. he would have drowned in his suffering, he would have drowned in his own blood. Right. And he was reminding the audience that he thanked God that he didn't sneeze. Uh -huh. He said he received letters from around the world, from presidents and ambassadors, and from around, as well as the people in this country. He said the one letter stood out to him was from a 12-year-old white girl. Uh -huh. And she said, Dr. King, I, uh, I, was, uh, I was told that if you would have sneezed, you would have died. You would have drowned in your own blood. And he said, I th she said, I thank God that you did sneeze. He said, I did too. Uh -huh. But my point is that he didn't have that hatred in it. Right, right. He didn't have that yeah. in as much. Yeah. So are we walking away from that from that bridge that got us thus far and we somewhat lost in the wilderness and we want to go back to Egypt? Yes. And this and this bridge will take us back. Yeah. Or do we realize that we're going back? Do you think we realize that's what's, the, what's, what's going to take us? I, I think we know where we're going. We just chose to go that way. Uh, you know, I, I hear, as I said, I hear preachers that are supposed to be experts on the Bible calling in uh, one man named, they call Brother Garcia. Uh, this man's supposed to know the Bible. And I can't understand how he can know the Bible so well and support the garbage that comes through that, uh, that radio station with Ryan B. I, I just can't put the two together. They don't rhyme. Uh, and, and any preacher who stands up in support of this man and the demagoguery that he has on his radio. This man has taken us back 40 years, and black people are standing by silently, uh, those that uh, don't call on the station, standing by silently saying that this man is wrong, but they won't say anything publicly about what he's doing. And if you stand by and allow him to, to, to capture the black audience in this town, then uh, once the wheel gets to rolling, it'll be hard to turn it around. And we see this uh, happening on a daily basis, daily basis. This man is doing a, a job on, on this community. Well, my concern also from a political perspective is this. I, I really want the audience to take a look at me, uh, look at what we're saying here. But also more important, I want you to take a walk with me right now through uh, our political process here. Leaders that we've had in our community for the last 25 to 30 years. Let me name a few of them. We're talking about Mr. Henry Bergen. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Mr. Henry Howard. We're talking about Mr. Lee Beard. We're talking about uh, Mr. Ed McIntyre. We're talking about uh, Senator Walker, who, who's incarcerated now. But by the grace of God, we had nothing to do with any of this. But none of them is here. And I think in a real way that God has given us an opportunity to establish a, a solid foundation and prepare ourselves in the future with good leadership. Right. And you know, down in my mind that A.K. Hassan represents an independent voice out there and giving us information that he's one of them, now, he's not the only right, one. Right, right. I'm just trying to make a point here. Yes. That we have to keep choosing leadership that will give us information. Yes. Okay, it's not trying to decide for you. He's giving you information that you make a decision. Right. That is a no-no, but you should want leadership that is accountable. One thing you can say, anytime A.K. got in office, he made some noise some right. kind of way, he began to inform the public. Right. So we have to demand more from leadership, whether you agree with him or not. Right. He don't come in there silent. Right. He come in to do something. So my thing is really, He's setting, in my mind, he's setting an example that we should want our leadership to do something sure, for us. Sure. Rather than come there and take it for granted. Let me give you an example. 
in the last four or five years, we have actually allowed people to inherit seats in our community. Mm -hmm. Ms. Bill just inherited the seat. Sure, she inherited it. She right. inherited the seat. That's right. And now we have the, we have the Howards yes. in the same situation. Yes. Here's a situation here that we don't even want to make a public comment on it. Yes. Now, Ryan Beek, decent in that regard, yes. he just said the Howards. Yeah, he won't even Howard. touch it. He won't even touch he it. He won't even touch it. Yes. But that's bad because that seat don't belong to the it Howards. That belong. seat belongs to the people. So to, to anyone who so runs and, and, and wins that seat. So we are really setting ourselves up for fair. We have to just look and make a decision. We're not trying to decide for you. We're just saying to just, just look at what we're giving ourselves over to. Yes. And we have to just, 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 just sit down and think about actually where we're headed. It is now an opportunity for us to choose good leadership. People who are forward and progressive thinkers, who are willing to reach across the aisles, who are ready, who's willing to do dialogue with people of the, with their, with their colleagues, really. Yes. You should, we really, should really have to say opposite race. Yes. It should be just their colleagues because there's ten, those are colleagues of one another. Yes. And it's going to take six. We have a very, very dynamic setup in our county commission, on our county commission, a very, very dynamic setup also on the Board of Education. Right. Meaning that the races have to talk to one another for the city to be successful. Absolutely. So can, can somebody tell me what's wrong with that? It, it's nothing wrong with that. And I tell you, uh, this community will lose if, if they don't go out and support AK in, in his election uh, coming in uh, November. Uh, uh, they will really lose because here's a young man who, who's out there who is working hard to give the public the information they need to know. They can make decisions. They are the ones that vote uh, people in and out of office. Uh, we've not had a, a man like A.K. in a long time uh, to come through and, and be independent voice and an intelligent person in the community. Uh, people spoke when they elected him to office. Uh, he was elected over the, I guess, the warlords candidate. He beat the warlords candidate. And, and he did that because people had problems with the Board of Education. And I don't expect that this will change in the coming election. Those same people will go out and vote for AK again. Only those people who have been led to believe that AK is trying to do something uh, against Dr. Locke because Dr. Locke makes no money. This is a simple argument to offer for the reason why AK is, uh, is against uh, Dr. Locke. That is the simplest reason that I could ever think of. But uh, here again, AK I don't think has anything to worry about because I have to believe that there are enough intelligent people out there who will return him to office and not support the candidate of the likes of a person like Ryan B. and Larry Anderson. Well, let me say this here also. Let me give a, just a little brief history here. When AK first got involved in politics on the, on the Board of Education, um, they were able to at that time as well, they, uh, that superintendent, they got rid of a, a, a superintendent at that particular time. Right. And getting rid of that superintendent, the Board of Education found out that there was $5.3 million in debt. Yes, I remember. And the state was about to, the school system was about to go into receivership. Absolutely. Now let me show you, show you all what happened and show you the dynamics of what a, a young man like him brought on the table. He was only 26 years old at the time. Right. And then the board decided to make him president. Right. I want you to understand this here. The board was 16 members at the time. Yes. It was 12 whites, 4 blacks right. on that board. Right. Remember, AK was only 27 years old at the time he became president. Yes. He was the first black, the youngest member ever to become a board, member of board of education, I mean, become a president of the Board of Education. Right. But I want you to understand this here. What's the bigger picture? What I'm trying to point trying to get here. Everybody on that board was old enough to be his parents. Right. Because most of them were retired school teachers just like they are right now in sure. their ways. Sure. But yet and still, they saw in a young 27-year-old black man, mm -hmm. black man, which right. is supposed to be unheard of in 19, right, we're talking about 1980, right. they were older to be his parents, and, now that I, and, I, and I've got to say this as well to try to make you see what they saw in him. Mm -hmm. He was also a Muslim. He also was a Muslim. Right. But yet and still, they saw that this young man could help the school system. Right. In two years' time, up under this leadership, he got the Richmond County Board of Education out of debt. Yes. Now, let me show you where you are. Now, let me fast forward now. Right now, since all this has been going on, I want you also to know that AK has not stopped. And every day, he's taking care of some people's business with their kids because they called him. He has not stopped taking care of that. Right. They did it with the contract because that room is open to deal with the contract. But look at the course of this here. 
the school system has lost a, has, has lost a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. That lawsuit, this lady has been awarded two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The attorney fees are going to be somewhere in the same neighborhood. Right. So now we're talking about a half a million dollars as a result of they charged Dr. Locke with racial discrimination. Right. Also, now there's another lawsuit yes. that has been filed by a young lady possible. I don't think sexual harassment is a charge, but as a result of say, there's retaliation in terms of a promotion. So she claimed, and that's an allegation. Right. But you know, once again, the, the school system has to defend, and the taxpayer has to defend Dr. Locke. Also, we're looking at the early part of the week, they emailing on the school system time to support Dr. Locke, once again, is a no-no. Right. The day we're looking at also, that yesterday here, they have put a young lady's personal file out in public. Yes. To discredit her. Yes. So we have to understand what's going on. How much longer, even if Dr. Locke was absolutely right, when you talk about when you're in a system like that, right. when you are bombarded with those type of things, you have to question if are you good for the system or not. Right. You know, if, if Dr. Locke were white, uh, I'm wondering, would, would the blacks be uh, as supportive of, of him as they are of Dr. Locke under the same circumstances? I would think no. Uh, they are upholding Dr. Locke because he's black, and they don't look at any deficiencies that he may have. They don't look at anything that he has done wrong. The only thing that matters is that he's black and we need to protect him. And that is wrong. That is absolutely well, wrong. all the schools he's building, talking about the delaying. Well, those schools, schools are going to be built inevitably because you have to build them. The population is expanding in South Augusta and, and they need new schools. So they were going to be built whether Dr. Locke was there or anybody else. The schools were going to be built. Well, this is splash money. It's like he came up no creative way to do these things. No. This is the taxpayer's money. Absolutely. Those things were going to be done anyway, period. Mm. And so, I mean, it's it just, it just ironic, and I just felt the need that we need to have something to, to say about that, to shed some light, to give an opinion about it, because I think what we really have to do, and just look at what's really at stake here, that's bigger than AK, that's bigger than Dr. Law, is there's individuals trying, from behind the scene, trying to control the hearts and minds of our community, and they're not white folks, they're black folks. They're black folks. They're black folks. Absolutely. And what we have to be concerned about is that they don't seem to have our interests at heart. Because you have to look at, if you take AK out of the picture, individual like AK out of the picture, AK has not been in politics for 20 some years. Right. And I ask you right now, did you have some problems before AK came on the scene? You do have, you have to say yes. Mm -hmm. So now you have somebody and people like him that we can look for to put in these positions that where they can be candid and open and honest and encourage you to empower you. Because one thing A.K. has said to me on several occasions, I said, A.K., why don't you tell the people this? Let them know this is happening. Right. He said, I don't make problems for my constituents. I solve them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I solve them. Yeah. I don't create problems for them. Mm -hmm. I solve problems for them. And that's what the kind of leadership that we need, an individual who will stand out there alone. Yes. And challenge the system. Absolutely. Alone, single-handedly, yes. nothing but faith, right. nothing but courage, right. and stand the form and challenge the whole system. Yes. People have to also be mindful, before he came, that Ms. Pullum and Mr. Scott been raising his hand for the last couple of years. They have been. But nobody listened. Nobody listened. They, they thought they was almost, they tried, they tried, to, uh, tried to define them according to them as being almost limited. Yes, they really did, especially Joe. Uh, they, they really jumped on Joe. But now Joe has someone that uh, Conrad in arms, and I'm glad AK is there, and Joe and Ms. Pulliam could uh, uh, fight this system uh, the way it is and change, make some changes there. Uh, we all suffer when, when these kinds of things go on and there's no resolution to them. But what I, what I really uh, like to say about Ms. Barbara Pullum and, and Mr. Scout, they, they ought to be commended because they have, they've stuck beside them because they realized this was the battle that they were fighting all the time. Yeah. But the difference is what happened here is this. They were sitting down and Dr. Locke and the rest of the boardman was they had those six votes. Yes. So they can let them jump up and down all day long. All on it, right. Because they eventually going to get what they wanted passed yeah. and no matter how much sand that they were. Anyway. But once AK came, the AK said, okay, I'm going to take it out of this back room. I'm going to put it in the hands of the public. Yes, yes. You are not going to ostracize me in no back room. Right. I'm going to let the public make a decision on this here. And at this point now, we, as we can see, all is not well. No, it is not well. Not well. And so, as you know, as a result of that, we thank you all for allowing us. I'd have to say we had to vent a little bit, you know, because I've sat silent for quite some time and trying to be and not in, in, indulge this audience 
in my opinion about the whole thing, and uh, because I want to be honest and fair with you, to you all, but then again, I have to realize I'm not being fair to you all because sure. that was my personal feeling trying to protect something, and I realize I don't have a right to do it. I still want you all to make a decision about what's been said tonight. Yeah, you have a but talk I, show. But I think I was obligated to, to say what needs to be said as well as let me allow Mr. Abram to say it because he probably would have been spoken if I would have said, Mr. Abram, we'll talk about this, but I've been holding everybody back, and I think we're at a point in time that we just cannot afford to share what's for the best interest of this community, and as usual, Mr. Abrams, you, you've been a scholar and a gentleman. We appreciate your commentary. As usual, we like, like, thank the audience for taking time out of your busy schedule and spending this hour with us. You have listened to Can We Talk. I'm your host, Ben Hassan, and you have a blessed night, and we'll see you tomorrow. You have been listening to Can We Talk. Can We Talk is sponsored in part by Christopher James. Set for Lloyd CPA. Call 706-722-6105. M.K. Hassan, Veterans Realty. Call 706-394-9889. Ferris Pest Control, Bugbuster. Call 706-631-5556. Ameriprise Financial Services. Charles F. Smith, Financial Advisor. Call 706-724-6257. Can We Talk, a Mayor Production.